Well, hello. I'm Irene, and you've walked into the second part of a three-video series. So if you're confused or frightened, just click on the link to part one. It should be somewhere, either below in the description or in the upper right corner. I try to be good about those things, but sometimes they slip my mind. I am super focused, however, on this Fall Feels project, because I am all fired up to play with some autumnal colors. Just look at that swatch chart. Is it not a thing of beauty? And if watercolors or autumn are your jam, this series might fire you up too. Before I get ahead of myself, I'm going to talk about the paper, Arches Rough. I could have used the more popular cold press, and that's what I more often use, but I don't know. Something about rough seems to fit the season. Or am I just making excuses? Anyway, I thought it might be interesting, since I get the impression that there are a lot of people who haven't tried rough textured paper. Here's a lingering close-up of Arch's cold press on the left and their rough on the right. The difference isn't huge, but hopefully you can see that rough is more textured, meaning the bumps and crevices are a tad more pronounced. After taping down the paper, I pulled out my drafting compass to lay down a circle as a guide. I ended up doing this several times since I decided that placing an object dead center would be a framing faux pas. I usually try to simplify my process by limiting the number of brushes used on a single project, but I wanted a variety of stroke shapes and sizes, so I pulled out four or five Princeton Neptune brushes, including the three-quarter inch square wash. In my opinion, the Neptunes are Princeton's most beautiful brushes. At first, I wasn't a fan of the sea glass handles on the flats, but they've grown on me. And with the round brushes, that dark wood color on the handles, what is that called? Walnut? No, it's too warm for walnut. Chestnut, perhaps. Anyway, it's a nice fallish color. I'm not saying I chose the brushes because they fit the theme. Really? <laughs> Who would do such a thing? So in this session, I wanted to paint a fall wreath using only the colors in my Fall Feels palette. Instead of listening to a rehash of the color list, check the description for all of the color names and brands. But I'll also add captions here and there to let you know which colors I'm using. I don't know about you, but I don't normally use 17 colors in one painting. In fact, for this piece, I think I ended up using 8 or 9. Earlier today, producer Mike and I enjoyed some window shopping and taking in the sights and smells of the almost fall retail scene. It's currently the first week of September, and inside the shops we visited today, autumnal merch was present, but not yet in full force. Our first stop was a local nursery and garden center. No real pumpkins yet, but they had a number of home decor displays, full of decorative pillows, scented candles, and plaid throw blankets in fall seasonal colors. Of course, they have other departments, so we spent a good hour there browsing. Then we hit Target and immediately treated ourselves to a pumpkin spice frappuccino at the Starbucks counter. That was thanks to a gift card. We don't get out that much, so one of those things can last us a good several months. It was nummy and made me feel like I was finally getting some fall on. 
Our target hasn't quite transitioned from back to school to spooky season, but we spotted a few Halloweenish items in their bargain bins. And much of the Halloween candy was stocked, but there were empty shelves where the Halloween decor, props, and costumes will eventually be placed. A couple of weeks ago, producer Mike won a gift basket at a local event, and it included various fun and useful items. Best of all were the large woven basket, a big cushy pillow, and a soft and comfy throw blanket, all in warm earth tones. I can almost see myself doing one of those decorate with me for fall videos. Well, not really. Our home is way too cluttered for that. I've mentioned before that I sometimes watch those videos. It's part of my indulgence in everything fall. But I do sometimes wonder why many of those channels seem so alike. I've watched, I don't know, six or seven of those Decorate With Me channels that seemed pressed from the same cookie cutter. You know, everything's pristine, there's a prevalence of white, and even the decor items look as if they came from one store. I mean, did they all attend the same vlogging seminar? The biggest issue for me, though, is that more often than not, they only switch out a handful of items. For example, they might add orange candles to the mantle, toss a couple of It's Fall, You All pillows on the couch, hang up a fall leaf wreath, and call it good. Okay, I'm exaggerating, but it does seem like they don't go far enough because it all ends up looking like a staged model home that nobody actually lives in. That's just a small sub-niche, though, because beyond that bubble of mainstreaminess, there's Jade the Libra, the Lair of Voltaire, and Christine McConnell. Just last year, Jade put together a fantastic Halloween mantle, in springtime, no less, and Voltaire has an ongoing series called Gothic Homemaking. These days, it seems that Christine creates more for her patrons rather than for YouTube, but her channel still has a small video library that I refer back to again and again. Her gingerbread Winchester house is one of my favorites. But even if you aren't into the creepy stuff, there's still a great new video from Christopher Heidemann where he gives you a tour of his fall decorated home, a lovely restored Victorian. Links for all the videos and channels mentioned will be in the description. It's been nearly 40 years since I used to walk to the public library. It was an easy, pleasant walk, because when you're young and full of vigor, you don't think twice about trekking 12 blocks on foot. I can trace my love of autumn to those walks, because it was during the months of fall when it was the most enjoyable. Those breezes that nudged the multicolored leaves from their branches the coolness in the air making it bearable to bundle up in a sweater. Then, near the end of October, mundane houses somehow turned mysterious and sinister with adornments of scarecrows and carved pumpkins on their front porches. I'll always associate magic with the smell of the library, because once I stepped inside and inhaled the aromas of well-used books, strange people on a mission, and wet, drippy umbrellas, it was as close to magic as I've ever felt. I came to rely on those visits to supply my next reading adventure, whether it was found in a ghost story, a cozy mystery, Marvel comics, or a volume of Better Homes and Gardens house plans. Fall is my favorite time to be outside. That's when I get the urge to go for a walk or have a picnic. 
Ideally, I'd spread a plaid waterproof blanket on the ground. Yeah, they make those specifically for picnicking. Then I'd settle into a folding camp chair with a cup of hot squash soup from a thermos. After getting my fill of people and dog watching, that's when the chicken salad sandwich would come out. Removing its parchment wrapper would release mouth-watering aromas of curry and craisins. While slowly savoring the mayo-y goodness and deliberately brushing croissant crumbs from the snug sweater that shows off my slender yet shapely figure, hey, this is a fantasy after all. I'd relish the envious glances. That's right, suckers. This is my daydream, and the soup and sandwiches are all for me. I recently discovered that the American Watercolor Society has a YouTube channel. I'm not a member, and I actually know very little about the group, but with a mission statement like to promote watercolor and education, they have to be a force for good, right? So I watched one of their videos, specifically the one with Barbara Netches demonstrating her process. Now, I've since watched a few other videos on their channel, but none of them were as fascinating to me. It was from last spring, and the painting she created, in under an hour, by the way, wasn't even my style, so to speak, but I watched that 50-minute video thoroughly engrossed, and now I sort of want to try creating something similar. I highly recommend that video, linked in the description. Barbara was unpretentious and self-effacing, but obviously a master with the medium. I mean, organizations such as the American Watercolor Society don't ask any Joe Blow with a brush to demonstrate for them. Near the end of this painting, I pulled out a rigger brush to create some thin, wispy lines. After that, I used a couple of koi watercolor brush markers in shades of gray for adding some text and loose line work. As I speak, I'm enjoying a mug of hot coffee with pumpkin spice flavored creamer. It's a small way to fallify things for sure, but pair it with pumpkin pie flavored Kit Kats and you've got big fall feels. You may have noticed that I haven't talked about pigment numbers yet in this video series, and that's because, for me, it's a situational thing. Meaning, there are times when I find that information useful, and there are times when I don't. I get that it is very important to many artists, though, especially professionals. But for me, it's just one more thing to worry about, and I'm often fine with flying by the seat of my pants. Artistically speaking, that is. That's not my life philosophy. Far from it. I thought the mixed paints looked like a work of art in itself, so I took a photo of it. All by accident, of course. I couldn't create an abstract piece that good if I tried. That said, look at how well this piece turned out. This is only one color combination. Obviously, with 17 colors to choose from, the possibilities are many. For instance, I could have gone heavier with the golds and oranges or used more blue in the purples. But I'm hoping this palette can be used for many different autumnal subjects, not just florals. Ideally, I would have painted multiple pieces to demonstrate the versatility of the palette. But at the time, I was tired, I was hungry, and I needed a nap. I am happy to share this, the second installment in this three-video series. 
So now that I've painted with my Fall Feels colors, the next video will show how I poured the paints into half pans and how I fit all 17 of them into this compact tin and the creation of the accompanying swatch chart. So a lot of ground to cover still. Yeah, this palette is looking pretty good. Hmm. To give away or not give away. Guess we'll just have to wait until the third and final Fall Feels video coming soon to find out. And if it feels like I'm dragging this out unnecessarily, well, some of those colors are from M. Graham. They use honey as a binder and need a while to cure. So hang in there. In the meantime, go ahead and get your fall on already. And stay artsy, my friends.